education based in narrow, well-edited database of facts, compiled by generations of largely uninformed Europeans with caps and rounds, who would fade dead away before they ever dared disagree with what the revered professor so-and-so had dictated to them in their own college days. And in so many cases, these teachers couldn't possibly know that they were missing most of the good stuff. Don't be mad at them, feel sorry for them, get on with it. Teach each other. You know, when I was recruiting teachers for the Cradle Board Teaching Project, it was kind of sad that almost every teacher, whether he or she was Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal, would come to me and they'd say, oh, I just don't feel qualified. I'm just not knowledgeable enough to teach about maybe anything. But that was why I'm there, to learn, to assemble, and to turn into accurate, engaging school curriculum and distribute all the cool stuff about Indian people seldom mentioned in science classes, although it should have been, in geography, in social studies classes. We have learned to see ourselves through the eyes of hundreds of years of competitive European bohemians who were descendants of the feudal system. Some were worse than others, but most intellectuals who wrote about us were basically using us, us as puppets for their personal propaganda campaigns. They established our public identities from outside to suit themselves, and this state of affairs and the academics and politicians who have played into this has hugely influenced how, how we have been misperceived by others, and even misperceived by ourselves. So what we're talking about tonight is detoxifying Aboriginal self-perception and outward identity. It never occurred to some of these very well-meaning outsiders that we were creative like other people. They just didn't know. Even today, most non-Aboriginal intellectuals are unaware of our inventors, our scientists, our astronauts and engineers, our painters and writers and sculptors and choreographers. Most college professors don't know about our pre-Columbian advances in astronomy, optics, acoustics, cranial surgery, dentistry, agronomy. They think of us in terms of arts and crafts. Now since you're in college, I'll mention that I'll mention that some European thinkers like Alexis de Tocqueville and white colonists like Thomas Paine were trying to promote the ideas of liberty and freedom. And they portrayed us as exemplars of independence, as noble free people. And we became viewed as noble savages, yes. Savage, French meaning, not a, not a brutal savage, but wild, yes. So don't let that come. Noble, noble, free, national people. However, the more feudal colleagues of the time connected to the kings, they feared free thinking. You get it? They feared free thinking. They said, and they probably believed, that we were incapable of civilization. They didn't want to know about life in the circle or any other form of alternative government. They saw them as competition. They also saw them as impossible because they didn't have the experience. They could never us. <laughs> 